All right, we are getting ready. Oh, it's another day. Dusty's sitting right here next to me. Oh yes, hey buddy. Dusty is my Rhodesian Ridgeback Blackmouth Cur mix. I have a pesky little Shih Tzu that's sitting next to him as well. His name is Gabby. And if there's ever, ever truth in advertising, that is indeed Gabby. Hey everybody, welcome to the stream. I am Super Pack. It is Memorial Day Monday, 2023, May 29th. And, uh... Just uh, got an update on London Lass's uh, situation there in the hospital. She has uh, underwent surgery today, and that's a good sign because that's actually going a little bit ahead of schedule than what they were anticipating. Yes, Dusty. Hello, buddy. Your timing is absolutely impeccable. You knew I was going to start streaming, and all of a sudden you just had to have all my attention. Well, how about that? Well, you got it right now. <laughs> Okay, so today we're going to talk about uh, why I got something. In other words, uh, this is a little thing we tried to do this month, but we got hit with a bunch of um, unfortunate uh, circumstances. And I see my Twitch studio just blanked out. And I see it just re-blanked out. I'm, hope I, I'm hoping I'm still actually on the air. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I see an absolute blank screen as far as my Twitch studio is concerned. So... Uh, let's, uh, hmm, let's see what I got here. I'm just going to go on to, uh, Twitch here on my anybody phone here, because I have no controls here whatsoever, and this is absolutely perfect. So let's see what I got here. In the meantime, let me talk about, uh, assuming that we're still on, <laughs> let's talk about the Atari 7800. That would be the thing why I got and what is it? The Atari 7800 is part of the third generation of video gaming. It premiered in 1986 in May, and it had a handful of titles come with it. And the history of it is rather interesting. Okay, I see the stream preview. I see that I'm on. I see that I'm live, and I see my ugly little face, or my caricature anyway. Okay, but I don't have a studio that's actually working right now. And uh, I may have to actually uh, drop this for a second. Dusty, really? <laughs> Doofus. So as we preface this real fast, let me see what is going on here. Is there anything I can actually edit, undo? Let's, uh, can I reload? Yeah, let's reload. Okay, as it's reloading, uh, let's talk about the 7800 real fast because I actually had pictures and a whole nine yards of things and stuff like that and well there you go so the Atari 7800 uh, came out in again May of 1986 it's part of the third generation of gaming there I am hello there hello there I can see me now the rain has gone there are no way it's here because it's still loading up I'll give it a second. All kinds, all kinds of frames. Yep. Thing. So just give it a second here, folks. Still dropping. Fr still loading up. Yes, it is. All righty. We're gonna per persevere anyway. Okay. So anyway, uh, the third generation of gaming is now upon us. The release of uh, Nintendo's entertainment system, uh, an entertainment system. In 1985, kind of triggered all this. Remember, there was a video game crash. Nobody wanted video games. Bad, boo, hiss, whatever you want to say. So, Nintendo kind of started a new movement with Nintendo Entertainment System due to the success of the Famicom a couple of years prior to that. So, Sega and Atari were like, well, what can we do? Now, Sega developed, hey, Lefty, oh, thank you for the description. Thank you, Lefty. How you doing, buddy? Hey, there I am. Four months. My goodness. That's hard to believe. The fact that I've actually been streaming four months is even harder to believe. Thanks for thanks for joining in there, buddy. So as I was saying, the, uh, the Atari 7800 was actually a system that was designed prior to the crash. I was just leave it. I just leave it resetting. Thank you very much. Appreciate it, Lefty. It's, it's, uh, it's been a wild... 
a not so great month. I appreciate that. That really made my day today. Thank you. Uh, have you heard of the Atari 7800, Lefty? Just out of curiosity. Oh, you're in lurk mode? Okay. I'll talk amongst myself. <laughs> so the Atari 7800. Going back to that for the umpteenth time. Nintendo actually, like I said, uh, they put out the Nintendo Entertainment System in North America. They actually wanted Atari to help them, and Atari said no. The new head of uh, everything there, Jack Tremiel, was like, no, we're not into this anymore. We're going to do computers. And, Atari, and Nintendo was like, okay, fine. So Nintendo eventually did put out their system, and lo and behold, it caught on. And somebody asked me, why did it look like it the way it did? You know, with the door opening and you put, put a cartridge in and um, pressing it down. Um, one of the designers thought that it would be good, good for the kids. You know, it would be an interesting way of playing video games. But also that in North America, remember, the Famicom was a top-loading thing. But in North America, the VCR was catching on. And so it kind of didn't look like a video game console, but more of a family entertainment console. And so there we are. So now video games have caught on again. Sega releases their master system, but Atari beat them to it with the Atari 7800. And like I said, it got released in May. So here we are. Nintendo, by the time 1986 is coming to an end, is 80% of the market. And Atari had something like less than, well, had less than 20%. Because Sega still had their hands in as well. Uh, Atari didn't do too well, needless to say. And uh, by 1992, the system was finished. So, they did release about 80 games for it, I think. But we're going to show you the games that made me get the Atari 7800 because I actually like Atari. And funny that, even though the video game crash happened in 83, I still played video games. There weren't any new ones to be bought because a lot of people also abandoned their systems. But... Um, this was the first, one of the first backwards compatible systems because you could actually play your Atari 2600 games onto it. So let's take a look at the, uh, the uh, 7800. And there it is. The Pro System, as they called it. It came with one controller and it actually came with a video game in it. And we'll talk about that in just a second. I was amazed Atari survived past the 5200. Yeah, you know, they almost didn't. Now, the 5200 is the second generation console. Um, originally, by the way, this was going to be called the 3600. To just add another, you know, it's like the in-between of the 5200 and the 2600. But as, uh, well, another 2600 from 5200, you got 7800. <laughs> okay, so, not a bad console. Uh, it had the basic features, though, power and pause and the reset and a start button. You could also start with the uh, two fire buttons that are on there. Basic four-way, actually an eight-way joystick. And uh, unlike its 5200 predecessor, it didn't have, thankfully, an analog joystick. It had just your simple classic joystick. So, let's take a look at... This is one of the uh, marketing flyers. There it is. Uh, showing the newly designed Atari 2600 Junior. And that sold at retail at $50 by that point. And then the Atari 7800, which premiered at $80. So, for $80, you can actually get yourself a console, a couple of controllers... And Pole Position 2, that was the packed in game for it. And this was very comparable to arcade graphics like um, technology. Uh, better res screen resolution, but it had the same output, sound output of that of the 2600. So it was kind of an in between hybrid, if you will. So there's the packed in game, the Atari uh, 7800's Pole Position 2. And to my knowledge, this is the only port of Pole Position 2 that actually existed. In other words, uh, other consoles didn't really have it. They had pole position, sure. Uh, that was made by Atari Soft, but not this one. This was actually exclusive to the PlayStation, uh, PlayStation excuse me, to the Atari 7800. Now, other games that I got for it that I actually showed interest to it was Ms. Pac-Man. I was actually impressed with the display of this particular Ms. Pac-Man. Um, looked very much like the arcade original. Sounded kind of like it too, but eh, you know, you'll be the judge. I also want to point out uh, that the Atari 20, uh, 7800 is the first Atari that was not made by Atari. It was made by General Con uh, Con General Computer. And they uh, they did a good job, I have to admit. I was quite uh, quite thrilled with this. Dig Dug. We've seen this before in the arcade versus console. Uh, this was one of the better ports of Dig Dug back in the uh, 
generations of uh, gaming of the day. Also, Robotron 2084, this is one of the rare home versions. Uh, I don't know of too many other versions that were ported over, aside from that of the 5200 version. Uh, this was actually quite good. We'll take a look at that in just a moment. The Atari Classic Centipede. And this one was all over the place. I made countless versions of this game. And again, another one that didn't have too many ports in the original day, that would be Galaga. Galaga did appear in the 7000. Ultimately, a few years later, it would appear on the Nintendo under Bandai. And Joust, another game that, well, well you got it for the 2600. You got it for the 5200. But this one, this is a 7000 version. And uh, again, it's very comparable to that of the arcade game. And this was a, kind of a weird game. I actually played this a few times in the arcade. It's called Food Fight. Um, that's Charlie there, flinging pies at chefs. And of course, you have to avoid being hit with food. Rather bizarre little game. I actually enjoyed it very much. And uh, this is an old classic here. This is an updated graphic classic, if you will. They call it the Ultimate Atari Astro Classic. Excuse me. Asteroids. They did make that for the 7800. So let's take a look at the 7800 right now as we will go to our console in just a moment. But first, we're gonna hit pause because I gotta get everything loaded up all of a sudden. How about that? Stand by. Stand by. Okay, cool. See, Lefty says I'm actually here just playing PUBG while I listen, excellent. Alrighty. So let's take a look at this. This is the Atari 700's Pole Position 2. And as you can see, well, it looks pretty darn cool. Does look a lot like the arcade game. And have you ever seen the Atari 2600 version of Pole Position? Um, it looks rather like a Lego game versus this thing. And you have your four classic tracks of, again from the arcade game. Test, Fuji, Suzuka, and Seaside. Fuji being the original track. But uh, this one, we're going to go for test. So let's see if I can uh, have my... Oh, my controller actually works today. Fantastic. Something's actually working. Haha. <laughs> Good for me. This has been a melody of errors today. Okay, so let's take a look at test track pole position. As I prepare to qualify... And you start off in low gear, you hit the joystick up to go into high gear, and you pray that you don't slide into a billboard or into a puddle. And of course, avoid all your colleagues there, or your competitors, I should say, that are on the road. Now, like I said, the Atari sound here that you hear sounds like your basic Atari engine sound, if you will, and that's because it was. They used the same sound chips, that of the 2600. Some games utilize, utilize it better than others. There you go. I pole positioned. Woohoo! Got my 4,000 bonus points. Of course, you know what that means? Nothing. Now I prepare to race. The one thing about the Atari 7800, though, it was really loaded with arcade ports. And the arcade ports themselves were that of the pre-crash generation. So the newer games that were coming out in, say, 1984, like Gauntlet and such, they didn't make um, arrivals at all, or they were quite late for the party. Now, Gauntlet did sort of make a... Um, no, don't crash. Did sort of make an appearance on the 7800. It was called Dark Chambers. It was heavily based off of Gauntlet, but it itself wasn't Gauntlet. Um, it was an okay game. There were some other games like Desert Falcon, uh, which was an original on the 7800. They also made a 2600 version, I should say. Uh, Tower Toppler, which was pretty darn cool. Um, they had a one-on-one -on -one Dr. J and Larry Bird title that was fantastic to play. 
But unlike Nintendo, I just really couldn't get those titles, and they certainly didn't have the third-party support for Atari made up most of their games on their own. Activision did make a few titles. Uh, oh, come on. Eh. Absolute made a few titles, but that's really about it. So, while Nintendo was enjoying the massive lion's share of the third generation of consoles, it was kind of putting a strain on the resources for Atari and certainly Sega. No, oh, I put it in the low gear because I'm stupid. Good job, Pac. And that's how you win races. Low gear all the way. Okay. Now, while the test track is not exactly exciting, it certainly is correct. If you played the Namco original, actually, the, funny, the original uh, for the arcade was also produced through Atari, but, of course, developed by Namco. Namco didn't start putting out titles on their own until around 1994 for various consoles. Oh, that was close. And, of course, one of the big ones that they put out uh, around that time was Tekken for the PlayStation. Final lap. But most of their titles were actually put, put out through Atari and or Bandai in North America. And not good. Ah, boo. Almost. Fortunately, I have plenty of time. But it is kind of a kicker to crash at this late, of this late in the race. But I believe we're about to hit the finish line. And there we go. Okay, 30 bonus units. And I'm going to get a passing bonus. 200 for the time. 50 for each car. Wow, past 26 cars. That's pretty cool. Not the most exciting game to pack in with your system. It's not like it's Super Mario Brothers for Nintendo. But, nevertheless, it was a decent job. Let's go to, uh, let's, <laughs> screw this. Let's go to Seaside. No, yeah, Suzuka. There you go. Now you want to see Suckage? Here comes Suckage. Start off low. Hit up high. There's no middle lines. Good luck with this. Lots of skidding. A few hairpins in here. Got some S curves. And a beautiful backdrop. Yeah, as I crash anyway. Good job. <laughs> this is how you fail to qualify, by the way. Yes. But like I said, if you've actually uh, compared this to the Atari 2600 version. Yep, failed to qualify, so I just now run out of time. And hit signs. So this game certainly was challenging. I only got 12 seconds left. Lousy ass cars, there you go. Out in the blaze of glory. Yes. No bonuses, nothing. Good job. <laughs> Let's play around with Fuji. Then we'll move on to our next game. Now we could play the fourth track. Who cares? Like I said, this was not a bad game to pack in with the system. Of course, one of the limitations of pole position in general, that's a one-player game. So if you want to play a two-player game, you're just going to have to wait. And one of the games that's in this list actually is a two-player game, simultaneous two-player game, of course, would be Joust. Okay, did I pole? I did. Beautiful. Isn't that right, Dusty? 
I pulled position. You know what that means? For you, nothing. For me, I'm in first place. Two, three, go! And we're off. Mount Fuji in the background. One of the most famous recognized mountains in the world. Somehow I'm already lapping cars. Going through puddles. Always hated those. Avoiding those signs. Oh yeah. Hitting cars. Beautiful. A good shift. Bad puddle. Oh, yeah. Oh, will I make it? I did. Get out of my lane. I can do it. Not that way. Okay. We can do it. We can do it. We can do it. I think I played this one on GB Atari. Pro. Yeah, they when the when the Namco Museum era started coming out in the uh, mid '90s, uh, these games finally made a home version. But unlike this, this is a port. This is not an actual arcade game, of course. I'm so close, close to crashing the design. <laughs> So, yeah, Pole Position finally did make its way to the home units, but it took a while. It took actually a few generations for it to make its presence. Here's Seaside. Ooh, San Francisco. That makes sense. Okay, I got a dog who's nudging my arm now. Dusty, really? You sat there so complacent for literally the hour that I was setting up all this stuff, and now you want to come and you want my attention. I'll give you my attention in just a second. Give me my... T I, no, no, yeah, okay. Now you put me in low gear, see? No, it's a good thing I don't have my camera on. <laughs> dog, yeah, the dog is saying he owns me. Damn right. Ah! Ah, okay. probably going to high gear. That probably would be a little bit better. No positioning. I did not qualify. Boo! I just ran out of time now. And crashing the cars. And get nudged by my dog. Dust, really? Stop. <laughs> Silly. And you know what? Oh, I would want to hit the sign. And there's piercing Shih Tzu, yes. Gabby's in another room now. That's Pole Position 2. In other words, that's the game that you get to play right off the bat. And imagine that, an era where you actually get video games with your console. I know. Hard to believe. But it happened. Didn't happen that often, but it happened. I'm going to take care of the dog here for just a second here. I think he needs to G.O. Because if I actually say the word go, he gets all excited. Oh, shit. Okay, we'll be right back. Stand by.
And it didn't change for DLC, huh? Yeah. Well, you know how it works. <laughs> okay, so. Go back through our little archives here. We did do an arcade versus console on Ms. Pac-Man not too long ago. Uh, we did feature this version. This is actually a fairly good version. All in zone, right? And this is the this is like the reason why I got this because it it looked really good on my 19 inch television, <laughs> and it actually looked fairly comparable to that of the arcade. So let's take a look at this game, shall we? Your classic game, your classic controls. You have your joystick. Uh, of course, Ms. Pac-Man. You can start on any one of the levels. Uh, you can start on the teddy bear level. I'll show you that in just a second. Uh, and, of course, cherry, strawberry, peach, pretzel, apple, pear, and banana. Now, unlike the um, regular game that if you actually start on one of these, the previous ones, the previous fruit will not appear. So, in other words, if I start on banana, only the banana will appear as the bonus. But in this case, we're going to start on the teddy bear because why not? And the teddy bear's bonus is worth 50 points. Check out the fast action of this. Yeah. Here we go. Speed. Warp 3. Oh my god. So the teddy bear version was something that, uh, that Atari put out for the young young of young children to play. Like if you actually played Dig Dug for the 2600 and you were playing on the teddy bear level, which there was a teddy bear level. I've gone flat. <laughs> Ludicrous speed! <laughs> um, if you play the teddy bear level on Dig Dug, the two monsters, that would be the Figar and the Puga, Puka, rather, they never left their chamber. You just pretty much let them dance all around until you actually go into their little hideout and, of course, you know, blow them up with your pump. Well, that's neat and all, but... I imagine even for the three-year-old, that might be just a tad dull. So, to make it easy for the kids in this one, you literally have the slow-motion version of Ms. Pac-Man. <laughs> of course, the teddy bear is running around the board at normal speed. God forbid anything else is. This kind of reminds me of the speed. If you play the, the, uh, the Apple... 2E version from Tarisoft. This is what it kind of reminds me of. The the absolute awesome lack of speed. Yep, and it's going to turn before I even have a chance to get to it, of course. So getting a perfect score on this board is like next to impossible unless you literally can get all four ghosts to come in. Kind of like what I'm trying to do right now. And it's just not going to happen. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. It's happening. All right, cool. Yay. And now we're back to the normal speed. So this is what you normally start with. I just happen to give myself 8,800 points more. Same two channel type uh, sounds. So certain things appear on the same channel, like the dots being eaten, the fruit bouncing around, the ghosts being eaten. And of course, then the background Whatever you want to call that sound is actually the ghosts. Much like Pac-Man's siren. But I have to admit, I actually enjoyed this. Oh, crap. Good job. Uh, the one thing I did have an issue, and it's kind of a minor thing, is the scoring. Uh, why is that? The For whatever reason, the Energizers are only worth 40 points. And I can't figure out why on earth would they make that kind of thing a thing. Everything else is correct. Went the wrong way. Ah. And we'll just clear out the board. So, yeah. This was quite... For, you know, for the past versions of Ms. Pac-Man that you had at your home, all of which were, of course, made by Atari, um, this was quite a welcome gift. 
Uh, you got a fairly ac accurate looking Ms. Pac Man. Sounds okay. I mean, it's not perfect. But it did the job. Overcorrection due to all the pa <laughs> Well, I tell you, they learned their lesson with Pac Man. Uh, even the Atari 2600 Ms. Pac Man. Uh, was a superior thing. And it's, it's that Todd Fry the, developed the uh, 2600 Pac Man, and he's better than that. He, he really is. And he, once again, it's just like, you know, the pressures and all that kind of stuff, just like Howard Warshaw had with um, E.T. Because he himself was a fantastic programmer as well. And it's just the way it works sometimes. Sometimes you just uh, get hit with a folly you can't really avoid. Alrighty. And even had the full intermissions. Now, for the Atari 2600, there was a late release. Oh, don't do that. There was a late release. Yes. I'll learn. Uh, it was called Junior Pac Man. Junior Pac Man was not an official Pac Man game. Neither was this one, by the way. This one was actually uh, originally developed as Crazy Auto by uh, MIT students. But anyway, uh, Junior Pac-Man was also an unofficial Pac-Man game. They did make a 2600 port and it is absolutely fantastic. Excellent sound effects. Uh, the animation is fantastic. Again, with the 2600 style graphics, can't really, can't really, you know, help all that. Oh, that's close. Yeah. I knew that was going to be close. But, Oh, you're going to go down there. Okay, well. Oopsie. But this was quite good. I'm really not liking my controller right now. Oh, oh, I can use the thumbstick. Dear. Okay. Now we're talking. That's right, I did double over the thumbstick, didn't I? Okay. Hey, dog, I have no idea what the hell you're doing. 30,000 even. Cool. You know what, Dust? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put the controller in your paws and you can start playing, okay? And now Gabby's turn. Yeah, of course. We're going to mail off the dog, I think. I did see someone try to teach your cat Smash Brothers. Really? Smash Brothers? That would be quite the thing. We, uh, My neighbor uh, actually had a cat whose thumbs were so big that it looked like they were opposable. And I have to admit, that's, that's quite a thing. This cat's name was Rocky. It looked like, you know, he had boxing gloves on, hence why the name. I thought that was absolutely adorable. Yeah, we're going survival mode now. Died too many times, too many distractions. Yep. Also, so, a couple of the other rules that actually the the arcade version had. For example, if you uh, are sitting there, not moving, and the, of course, and the uh, fruit happens to just go bounce on right on by you, um, you don't get the points. Your mouth has to be moving in order for you to eat the fruit. Not the ghosts, but the fruit. So, a little bit of a thing there. Yep. There we go. So, let's go straight to the banana board, shall we? No, 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 no. Ah. Let's do a soft reset, shall we? There we go. Okay. Okay. Uh, cherries, strawberries, orange, pretzel, apple, pear, and banana. So 
So when I had this game, uh, one of my challenges was that I could actually make it to the blue maze that uh, that followed this one. I don't know why I did that. Okay. So I kind of learned to play survival mode, and that's not how you do it. That's how you do it. And just like the arcade game, they have that one reversal in the middle. That followed the one reversal at the beginning. And that's it. Unlike Pac-Man, they only did that one set of reversals. Yep. That was that good job there, Skip. The ghost still. Because the red and the pink don't go to their corners, while the blue and the orange will. There we go. Maze number one. Maze number two. No additional fruit, so therefore. Are you kidding me? Are you absolutely kidding me? Wow. Well, at least I got a bonus life there. So if I, if I were to call this system anything, it'd be pretty much the arcade uh, console because it largely had nothing but arcade port ports to it. Some of the games are better than others. Uh, like I said, this certainly would be one of the better ones. There were some games that came out a little bit later on, especially uh, around 1988. Um, I think one of the worst ports they ever made was Donkey Kong. Kind of sad, because I was actually looking forward to that. Uh, Donkey Kong was actually based off the NES version of Donkey Kong as opposed to an arcade version. And it looked like the NES version, it played similar to that of the NES version, but it sounded like if you took the NES sound chips and put them through a metal grinder. Yeah, this joystick is not a four-way joystick. Okay, that's Ms. Pac-Man. So it took advantage of the lousiness of the 2600 sound chips big time. And that's kind of unfortunate because that's a rather disappointing. The same thing happened with Donkey Kong Jr. and Mario Brothers. And one of the reasons why, by the way, they actually appeared on the Atari 700 is because due to many things with Atari, lawsuits. Uh, they helped put them out there in the first place, and uh, they felt that they had a right to do so, and of course they sued Nintendo and won. In fact, they sued Nintendo over nu numerous things, <laughs> uh, particularly Lockout Chip. I'm going to bring that up on this one. Unlike the 2600, there was a digital signature on the Atari 700 joystick that uh, if it didn't have that signature, it wouldn't play. It was one of the first consoles to do that. Now, of course, another console that did that would be Nintendo Entertainment System. And, of course, who sued them? Atari did. And uh, Nintendo's battle with Tengen, which was also Atari through Tetris, the milk was already souring. So, there was that. Not exactly the, uh, the valued relationship that they could have had. But in the end, Nintendo's still around. They're still doing their shtick. Atari is, well, the current version of Atari that we all know and love is actually formerly a company called Infograms. It was based out in uh, Paris, in France, excuse me. And, uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's how things work. There are some unique things that you can trademark, but Atari really abused the hell out of the system. Uh, yeah, they, well, here's the thing. Um, it's, it's literally the firsts. So, if you think about it, if you're the first to do something and you actually file a trademark on it because you get to do so, you are the first to do this. Yeah, uh, they did sue, and a lot of this was largely keeping their money so, so they can actually have some sort of revenue. Uh, like I said, when this system came out, it only had maybe about 12% uh, of the video game market versus Nintendo's more than 80%. Huge difference. Nintendo was just killing things out there. Where Atari, the former king, wasn't. Antitrust. Very good point. We'll talk about that in a second. We're going to switch out games in just a moment. 
So let me go ahead and pop this one out. Exit. What's the next game I had on my doohickey thing? Dig Dug. And apparently Dig Dug means something to Dusty because now he's back down here once again. Yeah, I hear ya. I hear ya. Oh, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Yeah, you didn't do it the first time. You wanted a treat. And now all now all of a sudden? Now all of a sudden. Okay. Yeah, I hear ya. <laughs> oh my goodness. He is such a hamburger. He really is such a hamburger. I love him. <laughs> anyway, this is Dig Dug. This is the next game I heard. So the antitrust. Uh, Nintendo had a little provision in their uh, game development. If you made a game for the Nintendo Entertainment System, sometime during its lifetime, you could not make that same title, nor could anyone else for that matter, for two years on another console. And that is one of the main reasons why they had such a huge market share, an unholy market share, for Generation 3. And that really started, like, right out of the gate. When Atari found that out, of course, they sued Antitrust. And they won. Yes! They sure did, Dust. Oh, my. Yeah, you know what? You're absolutely right. Oh, yeah? Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we'll be right back. Okay, we're going to give it a second here. Dusty can be quite the challenge. <laughs> He's a good boy. My favorite, Dick Doug. Oh, yes. Uh, this is one of my favorites, too, actually. I played this game uh, with my best friend, and we had a different, we had a rather strange philosophy on this game. Uh, we would see who could, who could dig out the most dirt and keep the game going. And of course, it was quite the challenge, especially with the Figars, uh, you know, breathing fire uh, horizontally in the game. But uh, it, we, we called it the parking lot. And uh, my best friend managed to literally excavate the entire sand lot, if you will, of that board, where it was just nothing but um, free space. And I have to admit, that is quite the challenge. It, uh, took, it took a while, but it worked. So let's take a look at this game here. As you can see, it's your classic Dig Dug with, with the Pukas and the Figars. Again, another Namco classic brought over by Atari. And let's see what we've got here, shall we? He 
you have your classic Dig Dug music. And for whatever reason, controller is not working. Because... Because I put the controller down for just one friggin' minute, and now it just suddenly doesn't want to work. Uh, see if I can get... There you go. There you go. Yeah, thank you, Vin. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. We're going to soft reset. Let's try this again, shall we? It's funny. It let me start the game, but it wouldn't give me the controls. Fantastic. Okay. Gabby's fine. He's right here. Okay. And let's go over here. And... Oh, hey there! Ellipticus, first time chat. Hey, how you doing? Appreciate the lurk. Absolutely, get something to eat. Get some foodies. It's a good day for that, too. Ah. I should get my... There we go. I'm on your big screen? Oh, my goodness. I'm so sorry to hear that. Thank God my camera's not on. <laughs> now I gotta get the backdrop up on my uh, screen for that. It's just not a thing right now. Where's the music? The music's there. It's just really, really soft. I have to admit. I think everyone liked Dig Dug. It, it was one of those universally appealing games. Uh, I mean, it was colorful. It was it was cute, if you want to call it such. My guards were pissed. Oh, shit. That was bad. That was dumb. There we go. There you go. Get to 25. Like the Godzilla knockoff lizard, too. That's a Figar. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure Namco would compare him to Godzilla, per se. Ooh, missed. Uh, thanks for level up there, Vin. I watch for this failure. Yep. Nowhere to go on that one. Yeah, I already dropped one rock. I was trying to drop this one, of course. Really? There you go. Yeah, the hell with the fire. I want my mushroom. Got him! All right. Sweet deal. <laughs> like how they bob up and down <laughs> in anticipation of the rock coming down on them. Oh, missed this. every single one of them. You pissers. The fire up there is breathing a little bit out of control. This is fine. Got two of them. I'll pick. Oh, and the hurry up music. Close. Nice. There you go. This is one of those games I literally could play all day. It was that good. Unless I make stupid mistakes like what I'm about to do. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, get away from there. Yep. Just lead him on like a Pied Piper. Okay, let's see if I see if I can do this without like killing myself and stuff. Okay. There you go. Almost. Yep, that was the second one. Gotta hurry. Only have ten seconds. Only have ten seconds. I hear Dusty's having a blast back behind me. It's hyperventilating. But I got them all anyway. There were a couple of games that I would use to cool my, you know, to cool off from a rotten day. This was actually one of them, believe it or not. Uh, Galaga would be my other one. 
hot is the hot where uh, where we are it probably is we are in South Florida so yeah Mortal Kombat uh, you know the, the interesting choice interesting choice that would not be my first choice okay I gotta watch out yep okay so one of you can come over there you go got two of you oh I think that's Macy actually at to Macy really okay Oh, forgot the eggplant. Crap. It's like I've never played this game before. There you go. Enjoy that. Alright. Thank you. It's not fail yet. Close. Okay, there is an apple. My apple. 9,000 point apple. Heck yeah. Ooh, I can get another extra life out of this. Of course, why, unless I do stupid shit like that. There you go. What? No. You were just out. You were just out, buddy. No, no. What? No, no. What? No, no. Really? What else? What? 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 But you were just out. You even said hi to the nice neighborly dog in a very aggressive way. You're, you, you're, you're, you're killing me. You are so killing me. <laughs> he is so hard to say no to. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Okay, the hurry up music like immediately. There we go. There's my extra life. And you know what? Screw him. Get my 50 points for the rock. Ooh. Got two. Okay, I can make this work. Oh, only got the one. Okay, you suck. There you go. A little bit of a jitter there. Okay. Ah! Wanna go down. Wow, aggressive. Wow, aggressive crap. 62,740. Wait, is that a stomach? Ah, could be. Could be. So this definitely was one of the games I wanted because it was A, one of my absolute favorite games and I see that everything is frozen up on the screen. <laughs> oh man. Yep, it sure did. I, I'm just looking at it now. It didn't, uh, now it's just actually undone. Okay, that's great. Uh, so you didn't get to see the exciting finale. <laughs> But, uh, like I said, if you had an Atari 7800, the chances are you probably had this game. It was just that effing good. Uh, a, I love Dig Dug. Who didn't love Dig Dug? Everybody loved Dig Dug. And, uh, honestly, while it's not arcade perfect, it's pretty damn close. One more time. Yes, one more time. Count them one more time. Doggo has to go for a walk, because this is what he does. It's my first time... Doing a regular stream since uh, Soul Blazer on Thursday. 
now that you know now that London Lass's situation is uh, improving, uh, she is doing much better. Uh, I am very pleased to say that. Um, it's it's been an absolute roller coaster of emotion, and she's not out of the woods yet. By the way, she still has a, a bit of climb to go, but she's going upwards, and that's what's most important. And um, those on uh, who know us otherwise on Facebook, you know, by our by our actual names, and of course on Twitch, um, some of you. Give her some good wishes. I really appreciate that. She truly appreciate that. And I'm going bonkers. We'll be right back <laughs> after this second. Oh, as I put us on pause. Oh, blessed pause. Be right back. Okay. Whew. Oh, I love my dogs. I really do. They are the best. That's that's the thing about pets. You know, I've had cats and I've had dogs and I've had uh, I've had koi fish actually even. But uh, if I would had to choose over the species, it would be dogs. They are my absolute favorite creatures on this planet. Occasionally, I like them better than I like humans. But, uh, that's another story for another day. Alrighty, as we head into the second half of our show. Welcome again, I am Super Pack. We're at 8.01 Eastern PM, Memorial Day, Monday, 2023. We're talking about the Atari 7800 and why I got it. And so far, we've seen, well, the game that came with it, Pole Position 2, we played Ms. Pac-Man, and we just got our hands on Dig Dug and played a nice, super rich game on that. And, of course, arcade ports. So this was pretty much the system of arcade ports. The ColecoVision of the Generation 2 uh, was primarily your massive arcade port machine then. But, uh, like I said, Atari was under pressure to make a better system. 5200 didn't do that well. So along came the 7800. But it was shelved because they didn't bring it out until about a couple years after its development. 
And again, this was not developed by Atari themselves. Uh, this was actually by General Computer Corporation, or GCC. You'll see their name sometime um, somewhere in the game. But yeah, that's that. So let's go to the next game. Now, this game was fantastic because it actually used both controllers. And that would be... I hadn't even put it up yet. How about that? Let's try this again. It's like I had a pro gaming moment just now. Alright. Use both controllers because the game itself used two controllers. And the reason why it used two controllers is because its developer, Eugene Jarvis, uh, broke his right arm. And he couldn't twist his wrist to put his fingers over the buttons. And so he uh, instead made an eight-way joystick for your shoot versus the eight-way joystick for your move. And thus Robotron 2084. This is an excellent, excellent, excellent port of that game. Uh, it has everything right, uh, even pretty much down to the sounds. Remarkable thing. And if you notice, with all the moving robots and Robotron himself and the humanoids and the circly things over there, there are no flickering. And that's because of the way the system was designed. Uh, everything was practically background. So, it's, the, it's either there or it's not. So let's take a look at one player intermediate. And let's play. Now, this way I have it. I don't have it under two, two controller, so I kind of have to be super careful. I shoot only in the direction in which I'm facing, so it makes it a little tougher. I have to admit. Okay. Those would spawn off some tanks. Thankfully, they did not. And the indestructible hulks are there with the robots are there. Oh, there they go. Got my there you go. Like I said, incredibly good ad adaptation uh, with all the obstacles. The rules are perfect on this game as well. Just a really good port of this game. Okay, if they start. Yeah. Yeah. Ah! Close. Probably would be a bit easier if I actually had the second joystick, but alas, I don't, so let's do what we can. Okay, fifth wave. Oh, the brains. And they start shooting missiles at me. And if they happen to get one of the humanoids, well, they can launch those suckers at me as well. Now, thank goodness, the points... Oh, there's one. It's easy to get extra lives on this board because the humanoids go up in value as you collect them. So there you go, I'm already up to 90,000. So this is a fairly high scoring game, provided you can actually play it. And I've seen people not play this game too well, and still you get a pretty good score. Oh, and knocked them right into it. And they're starting to get faster. There you go. Excellent. <laughs> yes, let's just let's just walk right into him, shall we? Twit. Okay, come on, get the Oh man. Yep. Yeah, that's 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 a tall order there. Okay, the robot the tanks are still there, and there they go. Yeah, unlike the other things, the tanks actually remain. Oh, so close. Another game I could play quite a bit. So, I took uh, my two Atari 2600 joysticks, and I actually built a platform for them. Oh, good lord, really? And I actually mounted my two 2600 joysticks where they actually were, could come off, 
and I uh, did a Robotron setup just for this uh, for this version. It was actually quite quite neat. Worked like a charm. Now they did make a 5200 version of this game, and by comparison, it sucked. Boy, did it suck! But this game was absolutely brilliant. And honestly, I could not see the Nintendo Entertainment System having this game. Uh, because of a flicker. It just can't do it. Okay, get out of here, get out of here! I got too many robots. Oh, wow. I may not make this board. Because I have to move in order to fire. Okay. Yes. Yes! Okay. Oh, thank you. Another seizure game. Almost! Thanks for the chicken dance, I think. Oh, wow. Okay. Okay, maybe I can get another if I'm lucky. No, almost. Taking a couple more humanoids. Nope. Wait, I do have an extra. Uh, I do have lives. Oh, I started a new game. Idiot. Alright. Ha <laughs> ha. What was that? 201 something thousand points. I'll take it. That was actually quite good. Let's do a soft reset there. And there you go. What a game. It was an absolute treasure of a game. And again, this is like one of the few home versions uh, that they made during the day. And honestly, I, the only other two versions other than, other than this one that I could think of off the top of my head, uh, they were both for Atari. Once the 5200, like I said earlier, which wasn't that great. And then there was the Atari Lynx, the handheld system that they had, which actually was quite good. But uh, this is one of those games you don't see too often unless it's in an emulation package. Uh, seeing a home version is unusual. And I loved every bit of it. So much that I actually built a um, control panel for it. Isn't that right, Dusty? Isn't that right? What's up, buddy, Ro? Let's see, you've been out. You've had a treat. Now you're still here looking for affection? It's because I wasn't here all weekend, right? So I was actually at hospital with uh, London last. And her, her hospital is literally 90 minutes away from us. And so it's a, it is a bit of a challenge. Uh, especially with the traffic. We're... Uh, down here in South Florida, traffic is um, it's quite the experience. Whereas we don't have a whole lot of taxis or buses per se, so it's just literally people in their cars. And the people who are in their cars are not necessarily originally from here. And for whatever reason, that means that they simply can't drive. And just coming home today from work, uh, people were stopping at green lights. I'm like, what, what the hell? So... I don't know. I, 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 I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't know. Click. All right, so. Next up the bat. Oh, goody. This was a game that was uh, co-developed by Ed Log, who did some other fine work for um, Atari. And, uh... He did one of my absolute favorite games called Gauntlet. I mentioned that before. It came out in 84. One of the games that didn't, um, didn't get affected by the crash, per se. And the arcade industry didn't so much. It, um, it survived by other means, just because the consoles got more complicated. The 16-bit era had, um, had made its way. So... But uh, for these old-timer games like Centipede, yeah, it's still doing its thing. I love this game. Now, it didn't sound much like the arcade game. It sounded uh, well, it looked like if you put a 5200 sound chips through a meat grinder. But um, you be the judge. So let's take a look at the game itself. There's your Centipede, your 12-segmented seg Centipede. Of course, you got the spider who eats the mushrooms. Every time you shoot the Centipede, you create mushrooms. And if you have less than five mushrooms in your shooting area past the second wave, a flea will come down. Flea you have to hit twice for 200 points. 
And after the third wave, if you don't get a flea, you might get a scorpion that dances across the screen above your shooting area. And it can be fast, it could be slow. Now, there were, there were actual books on how to beat this game, how to play this game. And um, it just pretty much told you the game mechanics, if anything. So the spider can only travel in one direction. It can bob up and down like you see there, but he knows it's going to the right, but not going back to the left. So it only goes to the left, or if it goes to the right like this, it only goes to the right. The centipede uh, has a fast and slow mode, uh, fast and slow mode, excuse me. Um, if it's a slow mode and it's the last remaining head, then it goes to, into fast mode. You can see the two different, th different speeds there. Flea drops down, hit it once, drops even faster. Uh, anytime you damage a mushroom, it's worth five points after the, your life has ended. All that kind of good stuff. The basic rules. Of course, the closer you are when you shoot the spider, the more points it's worth. Three, six, or nine hundred points. So, once again, you have your novice level, and you can see it's a rather slow centipede. You have your standard level, and you have your advanced level, and you have your expert level. And the expert level, of course, is a really, really, really fast centipede. We're going to just play standard. You can only have one shot on the screen at a time, so I love it when people hold down that fire button, and then all of a sudden, you know, why did I, why did I get hit? Well, because you had a you had a shot somewhere up there at the top of the screen. That was close. Now at five thousand points, the spider will become a fast spider. Right now, it's still traveling at slow. And I only hit the flea once. It must be the uh, difficulty switch. It must be on the B setting. That's fine. I don't care at this point. Yep. One hit spiders. I have the difficulty switch on B. There's the fast spider. One hit fleas, rather. Excuse me. So, when my brother works... My brother's a uh, tech manager... Damn it. At a uh, rather fun and fast arcade... Um, that was originally owned by Sega and uh, by DreamWorks. Crow Spider. <laughs> oh, gotta be careful. Yep, I knew that was gonna happen. And I was playing Centipede there because they, they had actual uh, classic games there. And I said, why do you have C Centipede on the hard mode? And they're like, what do you mean? I said, well, the spider is coming down fast at 2500 instead of 5000. Then you must have dip switch uh, something like two uh, flipped on. And they're like, really? I said, yeah, really. And lo and behold, there it was. <laughs> oh, wow. That was good moves on that. This was a decent version. Like I said, uh, my one issue, believe it or not, is the sound. Uh, they could have done much better. The 2600 version had better sound than this one, in my honest opinion. Oops. So there was no reason not to. Now the Atari 5200 version sounded almost exactly like the arcade version. And that was fun to play, if you had a working joystick. The Atari 2600 did have a trackball. Which I do have. That's in my garage. That's ah, scorpion. Need to get another 5,000 points. Which is not going to happen. Ah! Crow Spider. This was a good version nonetheless, though. I was disappointed with the sounds. Uh, but the gameplay was pretty much spot on. Uh, if you had the Atari 2600 trackball, uh, you really got an arcade experience with this game. Um, because, of course, the trackball was was uh, part of Centipede's control. Uh, let's be stupid. Go with Expert. Expert's good. What harm could it do? Okay, the spider is already a bastard. Already a bastard. And the centipede is on speed. While I am not. Get rid of you. Wow. Okay. That's okay. If you played millipede in its hard mode, you get two spiders. I get ready you. The, the flea is already in fast mode. Holy cow. Okay. Wow. Yep. No, oh, man.
Don't think I'm gonna get an extra life here. Just saying. <laughs> wow. That, wow, that's, wow, okay. Mm-mm-mm. Okay, I gotta play novice now. Play one end of the spectrum. Now we're playing the other novice. Warp speed. Here we go. Oh my god. It is the Apple version. If I'm lucky. Now this is like the ta oh Jesus Christ, really? Yep, yep. That spider will descend somewhere. If anything, I'm going to get a lot of mushrooms. If you hadn't noticed, the flea will drop mushrooms as it's dropping down. In fact, you can see it doing right there. If I have less than five mushrooms, like I said before, in my shooting range, the flea starts dropping after the second wave. If the flea is not dropping after the second wave, I could get a scorpion. Again, if I have less than five mushrooms. So you want to keep the flea coming. Otherwise, a scorpion could be a coming. Okay. Oh, Jesus. Slow my... And yet, I still can't shoot the damn centipede to save my life. Well, there's a scorpion. At least a scorpion's normal speed. Now, when the centipede hits a poison mushroom that's discolored there, uh, it will drop all the way to the bottom of the board. Oops. And strangely enough, it didn't happen. It didn't touch any of them. Bet you it will now. There we go. Here they come. If the centipede head or any part of the centipede hits the bottom, uh, you better get rid of it fast because eight seconds later, another centipede head will come. And until you have a grand total of 12 centipede segments. Now, it hit the board, it hit the bottom because of the scorpion. So it goes back up to the top until it hits the top of your shooter's range. And then it'll start coming back down. Should have hit, wow, should have hit the bottom one more time, then the centipede heads will start coming. Since I died, all the poison mushrooms reset into regular mushrooms, give me five extra points for each mushroom. So a couple of people developed this game, Ed Log, and I forget the, uh, the young lady who uh, assisted with that. She did the design work, as far as the, you know, the characters and the colors and all that kind of stuff. And uh, they did a brilliant job. I thought it was one of the more fun games. And of course, um, there were a couple of games of this era that uh, started getting female players. Because largely by this time, in the first, second generations, Boys and men were playing video games, and not so much girls and women. Uh, until Ms. Pac-Man and this one came about. And why not? And I knew a couple people that were absolute expert centipede players. Cheryl, I have to admit, uh, literally beat the socks off of me. Yep, spider dead, yep. Yeah, this is the novice version of Centipede. Have you noticed also that the spider has not increased in speed? Nor has the flea or anyone else for that matter, except for the scorpion. Scorpion, wow. I better get an extra life here. The scorpion's being a jerk. Hmm. And that usually happens. <laughs> The problem with this game here, I could play the novice version forever. I still have all my lives. My, my initial lives, anyway. But as you can see now, the centipede is now pretty much the segment only. Get rid of the bottom ones here.
Hmm. Like I said before, I'm going to get a lot of mushrooms in this game. What was neat about the, uh, the 2600 versions of these games is that they were some of the games that actually came with comic books. Uh, they were actually printed by DC. And uh, there was an actual backstory behind uh, Centipede, which was rather, well, dumb. But uh, for what it's worth, it was kind of cute. A kid with a magic wand and turning centipedes into mushrooms and all that kind of stuff. The backstory is you no. Know, Centipede really wasn't evil, it was charming, but the scorpion made it evil, blah, 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 blah. So, I forget the nuts and bolts of it, because uh, it's been like, you know, near 40 years. But, um, there's little add-ons that they brought into the game to kind of give you a more explanation than simply, you're, you're playing an arcade game, stoop. You know, nothing more than an arcade game. Yeah, get rid of those. Sacrifice the life to get rid of those poison mushrooms. I am surrounded by three dogs all of a sudden. What the hell do you guys want? All right, you know what? You guys are gonna, you guys are gonna be a pain in the ass. Yeah, I, yeah, I hear you. I hear you. What more do you want from me? And I'm back to a full segment. A full centipede, rather. And now I'll have a centipede, a centipede and one head. For, again, a total of 12 seconds. Okay, we're going to miss that one. Oh, too soon. That's a lot of mushrooms. Well, the 700 version, by the time it came out, it came out with an instruction manual, and that's about it. The instruction manual wasn't even in color, it was in black and white. Save money, you know. Anything Atari could do to save money, they did. But that's just the way it works. Even the labels on the cartridges were in black and white. Are you kidding? <laughs> cool. There you go. So that's Centipede. Uh... Virtually, I mean, back in the day, this was one of the top games. Um, there's not much I can else say about this except that I haven't seen really a bad version until, until Sega Genesis actually had uh, arcade classics and featured updated, quote unquote, updated versions of your classic favorite games, most notably Centipede and Missile Command. God, they sucked. I, I, it's almost like, let, what can we do to make this game as hideous looking and sounding as possible and to insult the classic gamer? And they found a way. They actually found a way. Much to um, my chagrin. And there is one of those sitting in my garage. Because, again, I don't trade in any of my games. I was dumb enough to get it. And uh, probably should have rented at Blockbuster first. Because this is, um, I wasn't working in EB yet. That would come a little bit later. We're going to hit pause. We'll be right back. Stand by.
Now, despite my screen name, Super Pack, and my friends who've known me over the years have called me Pac-Man. And I do have a lot of Pac-Man memorabilia. Uh, if you've ever checked out my Instagram page, you see that there's, I have a sort of a Pac-Man cabinet that I play. It's actually a PlayStation kiosk that I've reworked, regutted. Uh, but I also have that Coleco uh, tabletop Pac-Man, uh, Pac-Man piggy bank, plushy t-shirt, you name it. And it, it's a challenge for my family. They try to get me a Pac-Man something every Christmas. And they've discovered, boy, what a chore that is, because I already have one. And, you know, the Hallmark keepsake ornament, and a candy dispenser, and a, a tiny arcade, a My Arcade, uh, a light display, a ghost, whatever. And again, there are pictures you can see that I've had some of that stuff over the years. But um, they managed still to find Pac-Man. As much as I'm associated with Pac-Man, by that regards... My favorite game in the whole wide world is this one. <laughs> I love Galaga. It is my go-to all-time chill game. Um, it's just, the gameplay was phenomenal. Uh, it is Galaxian reimagined to something fantastic. I love the way, you know, when the ships come down, like you see here. Uh, the capture ships, you know, the flagships, they capture your... Your vessel, and of course you have to shoot it down without actually shooting down your vessel. And uh, of course when the Blue Hornets there, they turn into other ships. They really screw things up. But it's a fantastic game. I love it. So in 1986, when the 7800 came out, we didn't have a Galaga port. It did not exist for the uh, Atari 5200. It did not exist for the Atari... 2600, nor did ColecoVision, or any other console for that matter. Galaxian was the game that appeared. This is the first home port. And it remained the only home port until Bandai released Galaga for the Nintendo Entertainment System. That would be 1988. So, for a couple of years, this is what you had. And graphically, of course, it's not perfect. Your ship is awful small down there, I will say that. But the gameplay, and remember, the gameplay was pretty much the top thing, not necessarily the graphics. So, player one, you could have to do a two-player game, just like you would, would anything else. And there was levels advanced, novice, and of course, expert. Well, we're just going to play advanced. That's normal in this particular game. And here we go. The classic intro. And of course the same flight formation that you come to know and love. A little bit stiffer. Certainly a little slower. Sounds pretty good. Okay. I'm about to say, are you guys going to come down or what? <laughs> now, one thing I have done... Oh, me too. This is, th this is my game. I've loved Galaga since it debuted. Good shot. And even the same rules apply, like, uh, although it didn't hear just now, I think it's because it waited too long. Uh, if you shoot a uh, flagship while it's um, not in formation, in other words, it's flying out in the air, the other ship stops shooting at you after a while. Uh, scoring is still the same. Everything is still the same. You know, every certain stage. Now, is he going to come after me? No, he's not. He's not a capture. There we go. One thing I don't do, I don't do the double ship. You wind up wasting a lot of ships because now you're twice the width. And especially with the Blue Hornets. 
They literally like to come up from underneath you. Oh, shoot. Crap. Oh, well. That could have been better. It takes nine years to tabulate. With the echoey music. Not terrible. Missed six. And they're flinging bombs. So, like I said, I don't do the double ship. It's annoying. Especially when... Well, I couldn't help that one. <laughs> but if I had, you know... I would have definitely lost the double the uh, my other ship then with, as well. Okay, I believe there's a dog that's tangled up in one of my wires down where my feet are. I don't know. I know it, it was threatening to rain where I am. And I know the dogs really, really, really don't like it. Okay. Yeah, you know, I can't hit you guys, right? Close. So, this version is slower than the arcade game, but, like I said, we didn't have too many choices. This was it, back in the day. And it did it did not launch with it. It came out a couple months later. Yeah, I'm going to lose that one. But, nonetheless, it certainly was a welcome choice. Outstanding game. Here's my extra life. At 30,000. Rather picky, though, with the sh collisions here. Okay, going back up there. Second run. And they even got the little sound there that you hear, the that lower sound that you hear. I love that sound. I think the only advantage to double ship was simply was the challenge stage. You, you had a much better chance of getting all 40. And come on down, that's right. Because you're not wanted. They don't like you. Okay. Like I said, you had a much better chance <laughs> of actually hitting anything in this case. Wow. This is going to suck. Off. Wow. Okay, this should be here. Nope. T yeah, take your time there. Wow. I don't even think I hit 30. It's not that hard. Yep, 26. Jesus, missed 14. Ah. Wait, wait. Now, here it has numbers on the bottom instead of the actual symbols and flags. Um, I think the highest wave I ever got in Galaga, uh, this would be the arcade version, uh, was 85. I have scored more than a million points in this game. But, it took some time to do. And I prefer the arcade version, to playing the arcade cabinet more than anything. I mean, having the emulator is fantastic and all. The controller is great and all that. But it's just the actual feel of the, you know, joystick and button on the control panel. My Ms. Pac-Man uh, that I have in my living room does have a retro arcade board made for the Ms. Pac-Man control panel. Uh, so the... You know, start one, start two buttons become fire buttons. Yeah, 
And it is, it is fun to play Galaga on that. I will say that. Bit faster. No shooties. Much faster. Okay. Wait until they start coming down. Okay, get them in formation. Come on. Okay. Now I'm a wimp when it comes to this game. Okay, he will not try to collect me because he's the only one left and he does not restart his formation. Here we go. That's right, it'll be more in the center. Will it? Oh, close. We're gonna have a lousy percent rate because of this. Oh, so close. Got him. Okay, I think that's my best one yet. Oh, oh, there you are. I say, thought you left me. All right. The extra ships don't start coming down yet, although they are flinging bombs like crazy. And the pissers are those blue ones. Mm. Ah, I was waiting for that one. There you go. The extras won't come in until after the next challenge stage, which is good. Okay, we'll have one of them now try to collect me at some point. There it goes. Oh, well, there's that. Too bad. Last ship! I've actually done the dumb and actually had my ship collected and be the last ship there. Lucky 13, 803, uh, excuse me, 80,300 points. 803,000. Let's see what my percentage was. 45%. I, I thought, I think that's generous. I was really shooting left and right, especially in challenge stages, waiting for the next wave of uh, ships to come down. But this was the Galaga of the day. Like I said, uh, it wasn't until uh, Namco started releasing Namco Museum did you really start seeing it more commonplace because I think maybe the Game Boy had one. Um, this is for North American audiences. And I know Nintendo had one. It was released by Bandai. And, of course, the 7800 version. You're looking at it right now. I think that's it. I don't think there were any other versions. But... Uh, I love this game. This is one of my absolute favorites. And click. Okay, so next one up. Let's go through the titles here. Ah, uh, yes. It's one of the games where my best friend and I, and even my brother and I, uh, played rather um, uh, mean. We were not nice to each other. We didn't have to be nice to each other. It was unnecessary to be nice to each other. And that's kind of perfect for us. Now, we've seen other versions of Joust here too, and also this was one of the Arcade vs. Console uh, games. And once again, this was arguably the best port. As you can see, just simply by, well, look at it. Looks like the arcade game. And that's one of the things the Atari 7800 was aiming for. It looks like the arcade game. Not necessarily sounds like one. This game is goofy. Well, yeah. So, you're on a flying ostrich. <laughs> and, uh, of course, your enemies are on vultures. And there's a pterodactyl if you wait too long. And 
And there was a second player. I keep thinking it's a goose. I know it's not a goose. I forget what bird it's supposed to be, but <clears throat> shoot me, nevertheless. There it is. Safe spot there. And it even had, a, a, not an attract mode, but a title screen similar to that of the arcade game. So, yeah. This one was actually pretty decent. Prepare to joust. It's buzzard bait. Oops. First time I checked out your content was a VOD of you playing this. Yeah. <laughs> Apparently most people uh, find my VODs first before, before anything. That's kind of how it works. I'm glad you uh, stuck around for that, though, Lefty. I appreciate it. Yeah, no, I, I was like... I was big on the old arcade games. And... You know, when my dad's uh, good friend... Uh, ran a video game store and ha actually had an arcade in his back room. And this was one of the games that was there. I was thinking, this is such a damn good game. And my best friend and I would play this game religiously when we would go visit his store. You need to lurk again? Okay. Lurk, lurk away. I missed the egg. Still missed the egg. Okay. But the Atari 2600, while it was... Ah, frick. While it was good, uh, it lacked something because of the, you know, the hardware limitations of the time. The graphics, the flat, you know, the flashy uh, buzzards and all that kind of stuff. Okay. Bye, egg. Get fried there. I'm not careful, a pterodactyl is going to be coming after me. Or not. But, uh, so the 5200 came along, and it was actually quite good. Good good sound. Good sound. Then this sucker came along, and oh my god, it was actually perfect. There it is. Can you defeat the pterodactyl? Let's find out. Okay, you need to hit it just right. Of course, the second one. Yeah, every 20 seconds now, one comes out. Ah! Okay, we won't find out. Not yet. You can defeat the pterodactyl. It is not unbeatable. You just gotta hit it right. But they are quite the pisser. Ah, oh, the lava troll is there. You can actually hear the hand snap. And yes, it will pull down... Oh, that was close. Uh-huh. Extra life. Pull him down, pull him down, pull him down! You suck. Got him! That's how you do that. Okay. See, it can be done. You just gotta know what the hell you're doing. And for me, that's kind of a stretch. I rarely know what I'm doing. I'm gonna leave a couple of those around. Actually, I think I will drop that. Middle section comes down. Bye-bye. Start seeing some silver knights here in a second. The next wave, I think. Come on, Lava Troll, you're better than that. Oh, bad luck. Come on, Lava Troll, do it for me. No, you're not doing it for me. There you go. Bye! Survivor wave. Another section comes down. Oh, yeah. Well, that was neat. 
Didn't survive that. Ah! Close. Expert time. So I, was, I would actually play the expert level, see what the hell they have. And essentially, it's just more of the same. Here they actually introduce the game with uh, the Silver Knights, along with the Red Knights. I have to admit, the shadow ones, the ones that are blue, are absolute bitches. But I really, really, really love this game. And this is... Good job. This is my favorite home version. Sadly, it's better than that of the Nintendo Entertainment Systems version, which, you know, if you think about it, really shouldn't be. But it is. Or that. Why did I do that? Wow. Quick game. Try that again. But it just, man, well, it's like Defender 2 that they made for the uh, Nintendo Entertainment System was, well, in a word, bad. Wow. Just, well, at least you got 100 points, right? Hey, 100. Uh, uh, uh. Really? No, oh, don't turn it. Yep, you're going to turn into a blue one. Son of a bitch. Yep. Well, that was neat. <laughs> Here is the beginner mode, by the way. As you can see, quite the challenge. Oh, yeah. Survival wave. Here we go. Wants me not survive. I find a way not to survive. It's like it's... Termination. That I won't survive. I survived. Yeah, I'm reading your thing right now. It's kind of... I mean, this is one of the games that's kind of hard to read uh, comments here, so hang on just a second there, Ben. <laughs> Belly flop! Yeah. All right, so he's going to stay up there. One thing I remember is Atari would have had nearly a decade's worth of experience with arcade ports, so improvement had to happen otherwise, otherwise you won't be in the business long. Well, you got to remember, Nintendo didn't make the ports themselves, unlike Atari. Atari did make the ports. Okay, come on. You jerk. All right. Where Atari did make the ports themselves, Nintendo not so much. Nintendo made their own ports of their own games, yes. Like uh, Mario Brothers and Donkey Kong. But they didn't make other people's games. This is where third-party support was quite key. Um... I will not get eggs on this one. I have no idea what the hell that one's doing up there. So, um, let's see, who made... <laughs> Egg wave. So, other companies made the ports for the, um, for the, on Nintendo itself. So, this is where you have to kind of think, you know, Atari add some really good programmers to mimic the game that you know and love in the arcade to make it play like the arcade game. Gotta give them kudos for that. Where Nintendo, other companies did that. Like, for example, believe it or not, uh, for Defender, uh, Hal America, with Atari, made Defender 2. And I believe the same thing was with Joust. Wow. Did I just do that? I sure did.
So when you get poor, unfortunate souls like Todd Fry who had to make the Atari 2600 Pac-Man. Really? Really? Yeah. Really. But they more than made up for it with some other titles, certainly. And if you recall, um, there was some disagreement of, over, you know, who gets the credit for what on the game and so forth like that. And uh, one of the big, big, big gripes that programmers had is that they felt they weren't valued at Atari. This is Now, this is back in the early days. This is the first and second generation of games. And four Atari programmers left Atari and formed a, comp a company, a little-known company called Activision. And they made it uh, where the name of the programmer was prominent on the label of the box. In other words, like, for example, David Crane's Pitfall. We all knew that Pitfall was made by David Crane because of that. And that was quite key to uh, their success because it, it was a pride. They, Activision made some really, really good games for Atari as a, as a third party. And I think a lot of it went to the fact that they got recognition for their work. Because, I, you know, again, I can mention other programmers for Atari. You probably wouldn't know. There you go. Wouldn't know who they were. Unless you actually, you know, do the stuff like, again, Howard Scott Warshaw, who made E.T. All Nintendo had to do was provide something playable while Atari was gone. Yeah. And Nintendo did, honestly, with their own stuff. Uh, you got to remember the launch titles for Nintendo Entertainment System were literally their arcade lineup. Uh, Popeye, uh, Excite Bike, Super Mario Brothers, etc. Donkey Kong, Donkey Kong Jr. So, they did. It was the third party people who... Eh. In fact, I was having a discussion with one of my, one of my colleagues today uh, about a company called LJN. And he, he refers to uh, the ang uh, Angry Game Nerd. Or nerd gamer, excuse me, and uh, he said I must be watching them. So I don't really watch them. See, apparently they have a, a complete dispassionate attitude towards uh, LJN, like I do, because honestly, LJN sucked. I can think of maybe one good game that they put out, and actually it was Rare's game because Rare wasn't a publisher; uh, they were they were a developer, and it was Who Framed Roger Rabbit. That's like the one good LGN game I could think of off the top of my head. Everything else they put out virtually sucked. But that's another story for another day, huh? <laughs> Click. All right, so next. We've got to get barrel through this. I just looked at the time. It's 8.55. I don't have to be anywhere tonight. Okay, food fight. Now, I'll bet you nobody out there who watches this VOD or who's watching now has ever heard of the game Food Fight. And I have to admit, I did play it. I played it in a, uh, it was an arcade named Bigfoot's. It was out in South Florida. And uh, it was a crazy game. But nobody knew of the game with me. It was like, oh, that's pretty cool. What is this? It's a food fight. You're, you're Charlie. And you're, you are flinging food at chefs who are flinging food back at you because they don't want you there. Let's load it up. So there's Charlie, and, well, he just got hit by the chef. Now, if the chef throws food at you and hits you, or if you make contact with the chef, your life is over. But essentially, what you want to do is you make it, one, make it from the right to the left and get that ice cream cone before it drips out into nothing. Now, I have to admit, the attract mode here is god-awful because it makes it look so damn easy to get caught. So the idea is not to get caught. And this is how we do that. We're going to start at level one. Eat the cone! And see, I can look around as I walk past food. I pick it up and throw it at the chefs. Now, any remaining food that's there, I get bonus points. And each cone is worth another 500 points. They're all lousy shots, by the way. Honestly, the worst food that we have is the one I have in my hand right now, spinach. 
It has a limited range. It does not reach the other side of the board. The best food that you can have is watermelon, because it's an endless supply. Don't fall down the holes, because if you do, you're going to wish you hadn't. You lose a life. The game starts off pretty easy, I will admit. Oh, you do want to start with food. Uh-huh. And I'm at a disadvantage already. Watermelons. Yep, gotta be careful. I think that's an instant replay. No, it's not. It went too long. Don't fall down. Don't fall, fall down that hole. They can fall down the holes too, by the way. They're a little faster now. They're better aimed too. Oops. Close. By the way, they can also knock themselves out of the board. Ah, that's a lot of bonus. Oh, the spinach board. Nice. Grab a handful as I hit. The cone, it is a very... I thought this was a gag game. No, it's not. It's a, it's a real game. Oh, that's close. This is a real game. Now, I dare say, um, this is quite close to the arcade. Oh, I got hit. Yeah, that's... They're all right up at me. There we go. That's much better. There we go. Okay, you gotta watch out. Sorry that one doesn't hit. Hurry. There we go. No. Tomatoes. As the board, as they get further in the game, they get they get better uh, at aim. At, by the way, where? Oh shit! Okay. Yep. That was not going to work. There we go. Now it gets harder because the cone is not in the center of the board anymore. It can be off skew just a tad. Seriously? Suck. There we go. Ah, uh, the instant replay. Sit back and relax. There you go. Always found that charming. Oh, that's how you get hit by food. Grab a pie, eat the cone. Extra life. Get away from me. I don't like you. Get away from me. That's close. Oh, the watermelons! Yes. Hurry. Oh, so close. Ah. This is a bit of a disadvantage. <laughs> I 
I got hit. Last life. Oh. Silly little game. But it was a damn good version. Uh, if you've ever played the arcade game, you, you know, find an emulation, whatever like that. Uh, you'll see that the similarities are quite, quite good. Uh, this is, as far as the, uh, the arcade game is concerned, uh, this is a perfect port. It did everything right. And again, that's kind of the thing about the Atari 7800, is that it was literally was a port for arcade games. And it did the job very well. We're going to show one last one. Now, this one is kind of the stretch of uh, the arcade game, because it didn't look anything like the arcade game. Click. Instead, they, they kind of built on it and just had fun with it. Let's go ahead and put this one on. And reset. Move the screen so I can actually see any, anything. And let's go ahead and capture it. And there we go. All right, Asteroids. Now, this was based off the 1979 classic from Atari. Uh, as you can see, this has color in it. As you can see, this has texture in it. The Asteroids looks like they have craters and stuff like that, and that's because they do. And your ship still has the same basic features. It still has hyperspace, and it still has thrust, and you still fire around, and you're still vulnerable to any type of attack from spaceships or from being hit by asteroids. But how does it play? Well, honestly, it plays just like you expect it to. I made the mistake of hitting thrust. I'm going to try to recenter. No, 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 no. Okay. That's about as center as I'm going to get. Okay, so. Of course, big asteroids are worth little points. Little asteroids are worth lots of points. Same thing with the sp big spaceship is only worth a couple of hundred points. Small spaceship is worth a thousand. Maybe I can set right there. We go. A little bit better. And of course, when you're not expecting it, you not really think about it, or if you know get surprised by the spaceship shooting at you. Well. You just really have to keep an eye out of what's coming at you. That's pretty much the gist of the game. So in other words, this is just merely an industrial strength version. Uh, I know it's going to get it by that one. Of the original arcade classic. And they, of course, put like little things like little space sounds, like the radio sounds, the space, uh, rather the stars in the background. Some of them actually twinkle. Again, the way they're hit kind of determines if they're going to get fast or slow. Oh, man. That was quick. Kind of like bank shots, if you will. And there's my extra life. Not ear-piercing... That's a lot of asteroids. Ah. You see, the way I shot them kind of it dispersed out a little bit better, thankfully. I am due for a small ship, which will be unfortunate because they have a better aim than the big ones. And that was a big ship. And they're susceptible to asteroids just like you are. And that's it. That was a fun little game. So let's see what Expert looks like. Oh, you already got a shitload of asteroids. Excellent. Perfect.
Now, I have to admit, I did play the hell out of the 2600 version. Um, it was just really fun to play. And with the difference, you know, it had different games. It was the same freaking game over and over again. Uh, it's just that the asteroids kind of deflected in different directions on certain levels. Uh, you got spaceships on certain levels, etc. So, yeah, 88 games, my ass. It's, it's simply the same game, just different difficulty. But, they were all fun. That's the catch. And that's the thing about this game. It was just simply a lot of fun. It's also one of the games that Buckman and Garcia actually wrote a song about. The game is called Hyperspace. If you have the album... Damn! I was not expecting that. If you actually have the album, you know what song I'm talking about. It's funny how I got an extra life a lot faster on this one. Spinning Mech Godzilla. <laughs> oh, there is a little fella. Yeah. Jackass. There you go. Oh! Yep. Wow. Tough little game. Tough little game. And yes, I did get this pretty much right off the bat. So, I spent a pretty good amount of money. Uh, the games themselves were like, you know, 20 to $30. The system was only 80 uh, but you got a lot of, out of it. The problem was, they didn't launch too many titles afterwards. They were rather slow getting t titles out. Unlike the Nintendo, uh, which was, you know, getting titles out left and right. So, of the third generation of consoles, where we, the big three would be the NES, uh, the Master System, and the 7800. 7800 fared the worst. And it's kind of a shame, too. Like I said, I was an arcade uh, player back in the day. I actually really loved the arcade titles. But uh, Sega and Nintendo were making original titles for their consoles, and they did a good job with it. And of course, you know, even in the early days of the Master System, when you had Fantasy Star, one of the early RPGs, and shortly after Nintendo's launch, you had Zelda, you were still getting primarily arcade ports uh, for the Atari. And again, it kind of dried up after a while. But that's just the way it worked. Um, the thing, though, was of the three systems, this was the cheapest. The technology had already been sitting out there for a couple of years. Uh, the games were cheap, too. So it was, it was a good value for me because I love this stuff. But uh, like with everything evolves, you, it's time to move on. And, of course, I got a Nintendo, of course, and all that kind of good stuff, too. If a, it beats a Wii, <laughs> Wii U, everything beats the Wii U. It's only a Solo Zelda that was Breath of, of the Wild, but that was also coming out for the Switch, which meant that the Wii U went lifespan, two HD ports. The Wii U had some interesting issues of um, it, like, really, really, really tried too hard. It was like the Switch is like what the Wii U should have been, honestly. But um, that's what happens. You know, they, they learn from their mistakes and they uh, went on and created a better platform. And I have to admit, the Switch is fantastic. It is a fantastic piece of hardware. Uh, it's so versatile. It literally replaced um, the handheld. It had replaced the DS. But there it is. And, um, well, why not? I think uh, it's a proper evolution of video gaming. And... Going back to this one, this is a third generation game of a uh, system, rather, and it played amongst the first generation games. So it had that. So you got to keep all your Atari 2600 games that you didn't because chances are you got rid of your Atari after the crash. It does get a bit warm, uh, so warning if you don't like the smell of hot air. Well, you know what it is? It's so small, and yet it's so powerful. And uh, that's the thing about those type of devices, that they will generate heat. 
You know, it's just how it works. But one day, we'll come up with a better cooling system. That's all she wrote, folks. Uh, that was it. That's why I got the Atari 7800. Those games that you saw, uh, there were a lot of good games for that particular system. We got to play Asteroids, Food Fight, Joust, Galaga, Centipede, Robotron 2084, Dig Dug, Ms. Pac-Man, and of course it came with Pole Position 2. Certainly a right thing if you like that kind of stuff, and I did like that kind of stuff. But like I said, ultimately, you know, you had the other systems as well. Nintendo just had the really strong presence, and they did it through a couple of ways. Of course, they did it through the licensing, but they also did it through um, coercing the other companies. You can't make this game for another two years for anything else. You know that, right? Eh. Atari didn't like that. They sued. And that's why you had the Tengen cartridges, the black ones, like um, Pac-Man, Rolling Thunder, and so forth. If you like what you saw, give me a follow. I greatly would appreciate it. Uh, I have a YouTube page of all the past stuff that's no longer here. Also, there's another YouTube page of The Match Game. Uh, if you happen to check that out, it's a fabulous game show back in the 70s. Let's see, what else do I have here? As I see the frame drops hit one more time. Jesus. Something hit my machine. <laughs> see what else I got here. I have an Instagram page with a bunch of stuff. I just put up a few more pictures of uh, some of the stuff I put up with the Ms. Pac-Man that I have in my, arc in my uh, arcade cabinet. A lot of fun to play because it also has a bunch of other games with it too, which is really cool. I'm actually looking to see who to raid, so just bear with me for just a moment. And Twitter, sometimes I remember to actually tweet that I'm actually doing something. Uh, I didn't do so today because, well, you know, I'm a doofus. Ah, oh, there he is. He's playing Octodad. Oh my god. Why? Dixie Chris, we're going to raid him as usual. He's playing a game called Octodad, which, uh, yeah, uh, it's a game of torture. More for the gamer rather than for the audience, but, you know, huh. And uh, we'll do that. We'll see you next time. Thursday, we'll continue with Soul Blazer, the new RPG game we just started. And boy, it's a good one. It's a great one from Enix. We'll check that out. And let's go ahead and... It's not starting to raid. Why? Because it's me. There we go. <laughs> Thank you very much. We'll check it out next time. I got... How many viewers? I got two whole viewers. Excellent. Fantastic. Ready to raid. Let's go. Thanks, Vin. See you on Thursday. Have a good night, folks. Bye.